Hi, this is David Brown, and today I want to talk about how to tell broad-winged hawks from red-shouldered hawks based on views you might have at a hawk watch. The target audience of this video is beginner hawk watchers in eastern North America who are looking for a summary or a review of identifying beautios, perhaps before a day of hawk watching. The first bird I want to take a look at is this adult red-tailed hawk. And I don't want to cover this species in depth in this video, maybe I will in another video, but I want to point out a few things about red-tailed hawks. Red-tailed hawks are the species that you should be most familiar with. It's the one that you'll probably see the most of, and it's a good one just to know the shape of it and the markings so you can compare other species against it. The shape of a red-tailed hawk is a typical beautio shape. Okay, the tail isn't extremely long, the wings are not too skinny, not too wide, wing, the wingtips are somewhat rounded. Just a very typical shape. If you know this shape, you can compare everything else against it. Let's look at a couple field marks that are distinctive for red-tailed hawks. If you look at the shoulders, it has dark patagial bars. Okay. Broad-winged hawks and red-shouldered hawks do not have dark patagial bars. So if you see a hawk that has them, it's probably a red-tailed hawk. If you see one that doesn't have them, it's not a red-tailed hawk. And red-shouldered hawk and broad-winged hawks are two good alternatives to consider. Red-tailed hawks are also known for their belly band, seen here. This is a typical adult eastern red-tailed hawk. This is about average for how heavily marked they are. You'll see some birds that are less heavily marked and some that are more heavily marked. I would say this is a representative of what you'll typically see though. If you look at the wingtips, we have one, two, three, four, five feathers that make up the wingtip. That gives it a somewhat blunt or rounded look. If we take a look at the tail, Adult red-tailed hawks have their namesake red tail. Another thing I'll point out about adult beautios is adults have dark trailing edges to the wings. Juveniles usually don't. So that's the red-tailed hawk. Let's now take a look at an adult broad-winged hawk. Okay? There is no dark patagial bars. Let me jump back to the red tail for a second. Dark patagials, very obvious. Broadwing doesn't have them. Look at the wingtip. One, two, three, four feathers. On the other side, one, two, three, four. Gives the wing a pointed look, especially from a distance. Very distinctive. Both red tails and red shoulders have more of a rounded wingtip. Broadwings have a pointed wingtip. The tail of adult broadwings looks dark with a wide white band. In the photo, you can see other white bands, but in the field, looking with binoculars from a distance, you'll only see one wide white band. Again, this is an adult beautio, so it has a dark trailing edge to the wing. And the underside of the adult broadwing hawk is brown barring. Let's now take a look at the juvenile broadwinged hawk. Again, no dark patagial bars. And again, the same wing tip shape as the adult. One, two, three, four feathers. Gives it a pointed wing tip. The tail is quite different from the adult. On juvenile broadwinged hawks, they have some light striping and then one dark stripe at the wing, at the uh, tail tip. The underside markings are also um, more of, of light vertical streaking. And again, it's variable how heavily marked they are there. Let's compare that to the red-shouldered hawk. Let's start off with the adult. Okay, One, two, three, four, five wingtip feathers, just like we saw in the red tail. Gives it that more rounded or blunt look. 
Another very distinctive feature of red-shouldered hawks is you can see there's more light that is passing through the wing here, just in from the tip, the base of these feathers. That's often referred to as a pale crescent. Very distinctive even from a distance. If you see that, you know that you're looking at a red-shouldered hawk. Broad-winged hawks, red-tailed hawks do not show that. Take a look at the tail. On the broad-winged hawk, we had a single wide white band. On the red-shouldered hawk, we have multiple narrow white bands. Let's take a look at the juvenile red-shouldered hawk. Again, you can see those pale crescents very well. And again, no dark patagial bars. The streaking on the body of the red-shouldered hawk can be very similar to the streaking on the broad-winged hawk, so that's not much of a help for telling the two apart. The tail, again, some light banding, maybe a slightly darker tip, but not as dark as you would see on the broad-wing. So when you're comparing the juvenile, the juvenile's red-shouldered hawk versus broad-winged hawk, the main thing you're looking for is the wingtips. Okay, red-shouldered hawks have rounded wingtips and pale crescents. The broad-winged hawk has pointed wingtips, no pale crescent. And remember, neither of them have patagial bars. Let's compare the adults. Here's the adult red-shouldered hawk. Okay, pale crescents, rounded wingtip. Adult broad-winged hawk pointed wingtip and no pale crescent, and remember the tail, one wide white band, whereas on red-shouldered, thinner white bands. I hope this has been a good introduction or a good review on how to identify some of the common video species you might encounter while hawk watching in eastern North America. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know if there's any other videos you would like me to make about hawk watching. Thanks. Bye.